Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bregaton. Before I forget, let's heal her up. I decided to get to the cavern of Tuk Tuktuk first, only because the ruined tower has a description, so I assume it's more important. But we'll see if that's the case. You come upon the opening to a small cave. Putrid gusts of hot air burp from deep within. You hear the faint chitter and hiss absorbs in earnest conversation. Enter the cave. Your boots crunch through a drift of brittle bones as you creep into the Zorp lair. Right. Looks like trouble. Coming this way. He is currently paralyzed, but when that wears off, he'll knock him down. At least that is the plan. Let's go. No rush. But if you have any antidotes in. I'd be much about uh -uh, didn't <laughs> work. That's not helpful. That's the priest, yeah, the priest dies to chill fog. Perfect. Oh, there's a war chief here. I should probably be focusing on him instead. Just what we needed. Let's get a dare back up here. I cannot whack him any harder. Another 
attack cap. I broke open. Yeah, of course. Take him down. Oh, there's a flame blade in front of us. Not happening. Explains why my pathing got all screwy. Oh, it's still there? I swore we destroyed it. Go out on a limb and say that's all the Zorps in the cave. But you got Shimmer Scale, Small Shield, plus one enemy's engaged, it's fine. Thermal Deflection, plus five all defenses against fire attacks, and Polished Scales, plus ten to all defenses against gaze attacks. The Small Shield is made from the scale of a long dead dragon, inlaid with Mother of Pearl and polished to a shine. It once belonged to Zorp Warrior. Did we a Zorp Warrior? who inherited it on the death of his clutch mother, who in turn inherited it from her tribe's shaman, who has gifted it by the dragon their tribe worshipped in recognition of his devotion. It's yours now. Happy to a sure thing. I will gladly accept. Will do. Sigil of Atrophy Wardstone. From the AoE, immune, immunity to Sigil Atrophy attacks. Alright, so it's a generic what can consumable. I do you for? As far as shields go, I'll wait to replace your lantern. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, maybe we'll make him proficient with small shields as well. He'll lose accuracy by using a one-handed weapon, but... He's in melee combat, I just want him to survive. I think having the extra defense from this is better. Yeah, sure thing. I've got it. More than my eyes be open. <laughs> oh, that's why we got the sigil. Okay, I see. Happy to oblige. What can I do you for? Uh huh. Speak some other sharp rock here in a moment. Would you suppose that belly thing is? From between the bars, there's a frail and sickly Zorup. It shrinks when you near. Pressing itself into the furthest corner of its cage, trembling. Around its neck are the remnants of a bedraggled feather crest. Pain is smeared across its face, but the pain is old, flaking. It hasn't been reapplied in some time. Zorb's regalia tells you they must have been an important figure in the tribe, perhaps a high priest, or a mother, but its condition makes clear that those days are long past. What happened to you? Zorp watches you with an unreadable expression on its face and says nothing. Break open the cage. You tear the bars clear out of their frame. 
The Zorb scrambles to get out of your reach. When you make no move to capture it, it stares between you and the open cage door, blinking rapidly. It tenses, then bursts out the door. What? The way she runs is ridiculous. So I wonder if she would have helped us with the fight if we freed her. The Zorp watches you intently. Who locked you up? The Zorp scuttles behind you and grabs hold of your leg. It points across the cave to the corpse of a large, well-adorned Zorp, one of their champions, and scowls. Why are you following me? The Zorp tilts its head slowly and blinks. It narrows its eyes, like it can't quite figure out what you mean. It glances back at the cage you freed it from, then stares at you expectantly. Do you always follow your leader around? The Zorb clings tightly to your leg, but refuses to let go. You want to come with me? It stares up at you, unblinking, and finally releases your leg. When you make no move to chase it away, it hops up and down excitedly. Adair nods in agreement. So, is it a... Oh, to crew my ship. Interesting. What is she good at? Cook and deckhand. We have a two-star cook, so I don't think... She'll be doing that. Alright, since one of our cannoneers is currently out... No, she's a cook and a deckhand, so she shouldn't even be on the cannons anyway. Alright, we'll have her right there then. And more than likely, we'll keep Mother Sharp Rock over someone like. All well, these are all original crewmates. Hmm. It's a tough call. We have a couple extra slots, so I'm not in no hurry to get rid of anybody yet. Also, we can change the colors. We'll hold off on that for now. All right, to the Ruined Tower. Name the island. Um... It's a lot of pressure. What's the name of the chieftain? I don't know. Sharp Rock's domain? Read the description for the Ruined Tower last time. We find a ruined tower rising up from the top of a low hillock. The wooden stone structure is stained by oily smoke residue, and a smattering of masonry is spread out from the tower's base in a wide fan. It seems to have suffered from some kind of explosion. Search the location. Take some time to search the tower. Find a few useful tools among the rubble. I keep searching this location. We continue exploring the tower ruins. Find a bundle of crafting ingredients. Keep searching this location. Continue exploring the tower ruins. <laughs> find a handful of common gems. You've searched every inch of the tower. There's nothing left for you to take. Okay, so that does coincide with the first island. As a description, it's more of a book event. So I was wrong. Cavern is more important. How long does it take for her to recover? Oh, four more days. That plus 20% heal rate, thanks to our 
One Star Surgeon. In our journey to Nekataka. Do you want to clear out around the islands that we've explored? Banged straight. The water darkens off the starboard bow of your ship, and jagged spurs and spits rise from the waves in the near distance. Raised voices carry from the helm. The Teotara Marvel is near here. Every sailor must see it once. Thomas' hands are clasped together in urgent entreaty. The Beodo is clenching the wheel with white knuckle determination. I don't care if it's Andre's salty bosom. <laughs> We're not sailing through a reef. Beodo notices you and relaxes. Captain, let me talk sense into Haima. Haima gapes at you both and miss our chance. Sailors wait weeks for weather and seas this smooth. If you ever wanted to see the Teotara Marvel, this is the time. Some of the other crew have gathered to listen, a hopeful shine in their eyes. What is the Teotara Marvel? I'm a shrugs. It's supposed to be a grand sight. An ancient mystery. I haven't seen it myself. Eld Engrim nods. A greybeard I crewed with claimed to have seen it. Swore it brought him ten years of good health and favorable winds. The other sailors murmur eagerly. Beodul sighs. Even if this marvel is close, there's no guarantee we'll see it by going through this reef. Little Luca, do we have charts to guide us through the reef? Little Luca nods half-heartedly. They're patchy, but they'll do. Assuming Beodul can get us through. <laughs> Beodul scowls at Little Luca. A uh, Rumdum Regere, what's the condition of our hull? Rumdum Regere grins. It's a good repair, Captain. I wouldn't sail through a reef myself. But if there's a good time to try, this is it. Right, sorry, Beodul. Take us through the reef. The dead coral juts from the surface, grasping above like the legs of a spider, and the wind whistles as it passes across the jagged structures. Below the water, schools of fish flash among the brilliant reefs. That's fine. Beodul attempts to guide the ship through the reef. With a shudder that rattles your bones, the vessel scrapes against the reef. A sound of tearing wood echoes across the deck, and hands scatter, descending into the hull to locate and repair any damage before it spoils the stores. Oh, we got some experience at least. Took 11 damage, lost 6 medicine. The variegated shallows give way to blue depths. An enormous sinkhole opens around you, yawning wide enough to swallow a fleet. Beodol sighs with relief as Haima searches the horizon for any sign of the mythical marvel. The Defiant sails on. So how does sailor experience work? T gained experience. It says 13. I don't know what the threshold is for them to level up. So I'm assuming if he was a higher level helmsman, we could have navigated the reef without issue. That's okay. Oh, hey, there's the marvel right there. I'm gonna keep getting off track. I keep seeing these islands off to the side. So, oh, let's go check that out. Let's go check that out. Right, let's get to the Teotara Marvel. We'll check out the island that's right beside us. The sea here is vast and as smooth as cyan glass. Jumping up and down, Ima shouts and points to port at the pale pillar of luminous Adra rising from beneath the surface of the water. Beodul takes you closer. Much of the stone is encrusted with coral, 
but the visible portions coil above the water in long, looping spirals. Adra normally grows in large pillars. This formation looks like, almost like seven tentacles of some terrible sea monster grasping for the sky. But Oluka whistles low. So old. Had to be in Gwythans. Eldengrim scoffs. Even they couldn't do that. That's Andra's slow, steady work. Even at night, the Andra shimmers, going from within and casting a go ghostly light across the surface of the sea. Indeed, it's hard to tell whether the Andra's strange contours have been shaped by slow wear of the sea or distorted by it. And something about that ambiguity makes the vision all the more extraordinary. The rest of the crew chimes in, debating the wonders, meaning, and origins in low, odd voices. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's no way to know where it came from. Enjoy it for whatever it is. Little Luca nods, while Eld Engram murmurs a quiet prayer. The remainder of the crew nod and return to their duties. Hands on his hips, Seraphine grins, and Jody nibbles on her lips to hide a spreading smile. Beodil sails past the Adra, maintaining a safe distance. Haima and Eld Engrim move to the Aft Castle, eyes locked on the Teatara Marvel, until it disappears below the horizon. Alright, to Tahai. Combat encounter, so let's quick save. Uh, we should probably rest up when we first get there. I could have done it there. I do really like the new food mechanic. So instead of trying to equip and eat everything before an encounter, you do it through the resting mechanic. Because you're going to rest. It's just a lot more intuitive and easier to use. I'm not going to use... Any good stuff here? It is plus one to dexterity to everybody. I only have one poultry. Let's not use that up yet. In fact, everybody gets a ploe nut. Looks like our party has moved... Oh, no. It's the same. What can I do you for? All right. Enemies ahead. All right, what's going on, guys? I bring your end. Let's go. Leave it to me. I 
right, yes, yes. She's getting a little beat up there. Should be fine now. Let's go drop a couple buffs. Seal must me too. Yeah, I didn't mean to hit him with that, but that's fine, I guess. Missed. Mm -hmm. Alright, resistant to slashing and piercing. <laughs> it's just both damage types for the sickle. Of course. Well, we'll just keep it as is. <laughs> Hey, watch it with that. Yeah, you be right, screwed. So I think he's out of range of us. He's being blocked by the other sea troll, which is super convenient for this fight. This is futile. Huh. Yeah. Undermining swinging. He's just very slow. No. Oh, think you got the decency to die? How may I? Bill Fall does have the decency to die. Happy to oblige. Yeah. Uh didn't work. See Lava is beyond seek. Right on time. Yeah. That's me slow going, but we will have this. Yeah. Um Yeah, same resistances it looks like. Up another one of these. Yeah. Take them down. That's it. Better than that. Yeah. What do you need? Something I can do. Fantastic. Oh, we're getting his head. Okay. I wonder if we got the head for the other character. Uh, for the Drake that we fought. We did. Okay, so they're bounties. Hmm? Uh, Tears of Saint Makawo. Martyr's Memories, plus one armor rating against spells, and grants Martyr's Memories, which is... Oh, interesting. It's a minus 100% damage taken, untargetable for 9.9 .9 seconds, and paralyzed, petrified for 9.9 .9 seconds. The caster becomes petrified and untargetable for a brief time. The small file clasped to the end of this necklace is purported to contain the tears shed by the martyr, St. Makalwo, at the moment of his death. Ring of Overseeing, plus 10% area of effect. i give that to Aloth. As for this, um, I don't know if she has a necklace yet. Might give that to her just as a get out of jail free card. Like, yeah. On it. Though this might be good on Jody instead. She does have a necklace. Maybe that's better. Maybe we'll give this to Aloth instead. Maybe not. Well, I don't know. 
Give that to her instead. As for this... We'll do it like that. Good thinking. So if they get into my back line, I want to rush Seraphin forward to intercept since he's more likely to survive than Aloth. Well, he has more health. He, well, he certainly has more health because of the, the aim that we just gave him. Looks like we're done here. Another resounding success for Donald and the gang. Or there's something else down here. I guess not. Well, so be it. We're slowly getting there. Oh, my rations low there? I guess they're kind of low. Only minus six per day. It's not too bad. I hate leaving this fog of war just sitting here. It's not as bad now. Don't do it. Oh, it's a merchant. Alright, we're almost there. Lethargic, misshapen bird drops a damp missive onto the deck. Try the critter cleaver. O'Donnell, Captain of the Defiant. I know what you're thinking. I have too many lovable cats, dogs, pigs, birds, and pigs. <laughs> like you, I once thought I could take in stray pets. Care for their needs. And shower each with equal affection. But we limited beings have only so much love to spread around. Unpleasant, unfair, unfortunate. That's why I took it upon myself to optimize affection and curtail my creature care. I bring you the Critter Cleaver. The cleaver is a handy, ethics-free apparatus yanked from a genuine and Gwithin dig site and restored to glorious functionality. Simply slide your favorite feline down one end and let the cleaver do its charm. The best is yet to come. See, the cleaver remembers. Stick a white bird in there, it remembers. Purple pig, it remembers. It even remembers your pig, your pet's strengths, weaknesses, and favorite places to poop. Now your furry friend isn't going to just slide out of the cleaver's business end same as it went inside. No. They come out different. Better. Sometimes. That's where it gets fun. Combinations. Want a bird to think like a pig? Want a cat to think like a different, better cat? <laughs> the cleaver provides. You'd be doing me a favor of epic proportions if you gave the critter cleaver a whirl. Once folks see you using it, everyone will want to turn. I moved it to the far wall of the Dark Cupboard, which is at Periki's Overlook in Nakataka. You can find the cleaver just due west of the Wooden Fella. A friend and fellow animal lover, P.S. I fixed the insert receptacle so that it no longer accepts Orleans and gave it a good scrubbing. You're welcome. I think it's called a cleaver. It makes me not want to use it. But I'm interested I'm interested in what the mechanic actually is. By the way, for now, I'm going to call it here. On next episode, we will enter Nekataka. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.